Helldivers, you know what we're here to do. Round up the game's biggest leaks over the last couple of weeks and break everything down to give you all a glimpse at how we'll be spreading managed democracy in the near future. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and let's dive into another round of Helldivers 2 leaks. So first up, let's take a fresh look at two leak stratagems we talked about in the last video, starting with the anti-tank mines. Thanks to user emptiness on Reddit, we've got some incredible footage to break down. In one of the first scenes, we can see the anti-tank mines used against a mob of robot enemies, and I am honestly impressed at how well the stratagem handles such a big mass of troops. Automatons flying everywhere as they walk on the anti-tank mines, and while you can have a similar effect with the anti-personnel mines, the anti-tank mines certainly pack a bit more of a punch. In one of the next shots, we see the anti-tank mines used against a Hulk. And this is one of the scenarios I was really interested to check out because we can see here it takes about five direct hit explosions to kill one Hulk. Truthfully, that seems a bit high to me because five mines would wipe out a sizable amount of the arsenal, but factoring in AoE damage, there's a good chance these mines would also take out any other targets that were stacked up. Either way, the anti-tank mines do get the job done here, it's really just a matter of effectiveness. What's more impressive are the anti-tank mines against the automaton tank, which kill it in three direct hit explosions. That's what I'm talking about, an efficient use of a stratagem that could still have some residual impact because not all of the mines were wasted. A huge shout out to Emptiness too, because on the very next clip, he tested the anti-tank mines on one of the new factory strider enemies. I was shocked to see this thing go down in just a few explosions. This might end up being the most effective way to take these massive enemies down, which if true would be huge because they require a ton of force to take out otherwise. Finally, on the Terminid side, we have to check out this shot of a Charger rushing through a field of anti-tank mines. Two explosions and the Charger is dead. That is something. Long story short, I think the anti-tank mines bring enough firepower and based on the leaks, look to easily deal with the majority of the major threats within the game. Another new stratagem we talked about last time, the Airburst Rocket Launcher, is absolutely looking to punch above its weight class. Emptiness is on the case again because a new look at the leaked weapon shows it's much more capable of dealing with just aerial enemies. The principle of the weapon is pretty straightforward, but it looks challenging to judge its effective AoE, which is seemingly massive. The weapon takes up the support slot as well as a backpack slot, which we've known. When fired, it shoots out a single projectile that explodes when it detects any enemy near its flight path. This triggers a main explosion and then a dozen or so smaller explosions in a wide area of effect. Empty tested the weapon on everything, from heavily armored enemies like automaton tanks, which it dispatches easily, to structures like the terminated shrieker nests. The airburst rocket launcher seemingly handles them all with relative ease. There's a big downside to this weapon, it's slow reload time and unpredictability. You can see on multiple occasions, Empty getting caught in the explosion because the AoE is so large, but that's just an aspect of the weapon players will have to compensate for. With the Quasar and EATs still being a majority of players go to anti-tank weapons, I'm really curious to see if the airburst flexibility ends up making it a frequent pick for divers. If there's one stratagem I can't wait to get my hands on, it's the XO-49 Emancipator. This is the dual auto cannon variant we told you about a month ago, but thanks again to Emptiness, we have such a clean look at what this upcoming mech is going to bring to the table. First off, we're dealing with 75 shots per arm per mech. That's 150 rounds in total and a ton of heavy firepower. Unlike the limited ammunition of the Patriot exosuit, the Emancipator has more than enough stopping power to take down practically anything from chargers in just a few shots to any number of automaton enemies such as hulks, which you can see it dispatches with ease, to those massive laser towers that will snipe you from across the map. The question really is, when will the Emancipator deploy to the battlefield? Because this is a complete asset. Unlike some of the other league stratagems, this thing looks and functions awesome and is combat ready, at least by my estimations. Either way, I can't wait to see what this thing can do against the Terminid, the Automatons, and I especially think this will end up being a game changer when we eventually have to fight the Illuminate. The last League stratagem I want to talk about today is the SEAF Troop Drop. This has been around for quite a while, and a lot of leakers have resisted calling them into their game because it would crash. Well, QYP isn't afraid of such issues and posted a video on their YouTube that shows the Sieve Troopers in action, if you could call it that. This is one of those assets that is far from polished. 
Truthfully, it doesn't even look like they're committed to the idea, but I hope they invest the time and energy into bringing this thing to life, because the thought of a half dozen troopers following the squad around shooting at any enemy that moves is pretty amazing. We've talked about this before, but the viability of this stratagem will come down to how well the AI is programmed. If the troopers stand out in the open, avoiding active cover and die in two hits, then I can't imagine anyone will be wanting to take this. But if they're somewhat decent, this could be one of those landscape shifting stratagems that changes the dynamic of loadouts within the game. That's enough about stratagems. Let's talk about some other interesting leaks found in the deep recesses of the Helldivers 2 files. Take a look at this cheery fellow here. According to Iron Sights on the Helldivers 2 leaks discord, this is a robot conscript tagged under the Super Earth faction. We already know we were heading to Super Earth at some point as the planet exists within the game files, and a number of other files have been found that point to activity there, but this is the first NPC we've seen tied to our home planet. I love this little dude and have no idea how he'll factor in, whether he's just an NPC that wanders around or tied to some objective, but I will move heaven and earth to keep him safe. There's also this communications relay render, which I think could also be tied to Super Earth. If you've ever watched an old war movie, you know when you're under attack, the first thing you do is try to establish communications. If Super Earth does come under attack, my guess is there will be some sort of objective where we'll have to establish communications with our armada up in space. I'm obviously leaning into the RP just a bit here, but I think it makes sense and could even be used afterwards as a secondary objective on other planets. Then there's possibly the most disturbing leaks of them all, the automaton centrifuge, called the Grinder. There was a minute there where everyone thought the automatons were vanquished. That's it, war over. But I knew the truth. Thanks again to Iron Sights for posting these on the Helldivers 2 leaks discord, because they are easily the most gruesome mission objective we'll face in the near future. Used to grind up the bodies of fallen Super Earth soldiers, the grinder objective fuels the automaton war machine in some twisted way. From the animations to the various shots of the storage cells, there's something here that just sends a chill down my spine. I am hoping these images actually signal a darker tone for Helldivers 2. It would be cool to see a complete transformation of the game's aesthetic during the quote unquote dark days of the world. It would be a massive undertaking, but items like the grinder certainly make me think there are some tough times ahead for us Helldivers. I wanted to leave you all with a small bonus leak. This is a chonky, beefy secondary weapon and could give the Senator a run for its money as a heavy weapon of choice for that secondary slot. There's not much more to say other than that this thing looks like the Helldivers 2 equivalent of a Desert Eagle, so fingers crossed this becomes available sometime in the near future. Helldivers, we are having a ton of fun continuing to cover all of the leaked goodness from people around the community. If you enjoy these videos and you're excited for the future of Helldivers 2, you already know what to do. Hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing because it's still the single best way to help channels like ours reach new audiences. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.